Uh, we, we did, the family spoke with the mayor today. Um, it was a good conversation, um, but there are still, those two officers that were uh, fired, uh, what, what we know is that it wasn't just those two officers. And so that's what we communicated uh, to the mayor, that there has to be a deeper dive. And w as we continue to investigate, um, this young man bled and was bleeding and for hours without any medical attention. Um, he, they left prongs from the tasers in his back without any medical attention. That as he was walking, being, you know, after he's already brutalized, he's already bleeding, blood all over his clothes, that the officer that is taking him uh, to booking is punching him in the back. So his brutalization went beyond what was just caught on video. And so we really, again, want the chief and the mayor to, to delve deeper. Um, this is the easy fix. The easy fix is to fire the two officers that ev the whole world sees on the video. The deeper dive is to address the culture and what else happened throughout this process. And so um, oftentimes we're always asked um, as black people, and we're speaking generally, you know, we're, we're the quickest, why are you asking us, you know, for forgiveness already? That's right. That's right. right? Let us process, you know, but we're the ones that are supposed to always jump to, you know, I forgive. And, and everybody here, we're, we're God-fearing folk, but give us a chance to process. Don't ask for our forgiveness just yet until you, you know, we forgive when we feel like there is justice, right. not just because of one or two uh, trinkets. Um, what's happened to this family, he's gonna have to live with. This family has to deal with. They see that video, the difficulty in eating, all of, you know, just being able to process this. So I just, again, would hold off on asking, you know, forgiveness and, and those kinds of things. That's premature. And tonight I spoke, she spoke to the mayor also. Um, it was a good conversation. Yeah. You want to comment on? Um, so, yeah, I spoke to the mayor today. Um, it was very good. Um, I just want to put out there, Officer Jones was disgusting. He did the worst things imaginable. He, when walking me and Messiah off, he says that he was going to shoot us. Like, this is stuff that shouldn't be said after we, after all the trauma. After the trauma that's been, like, on video, and then he goes back and he says this, as we're still trying to even process what even happened. I still can't even process what happened. And for someone to say something like that is disgusting. We felt like we were going to die in that car. So for him to walk us off and say, oh, we were going to shoot, like, we were going to shoot y'all, that's not cool. Like, that's not something that should be said, like, after all of this. Like, no. So, Officer A. Jones, that's, that's who I have a very big issue with. All the other officers as well. But him, yes. And then I want to remind y'all, she, she didn't get charged. All the stuff you saw in that video, that harsh attack, she also got slammed on the ground after, handcuffed, picked up off the ground, put in a paddy wagon for hours, Taser. tasered, and then they came and cut him off her and let her out the back by the Phillips Arena. And she kept asking, what did I do? What, am I under arrest? Am I under arrest? What did I do? She's in the back of a paddy wagon, trapped with four other women, and they wouldn't provide masks to them. And she kept asking for a mask, for a mask, for a mask, because they're in a small hot van. And I have asthma. And she has asthma, and, and then they just cut her loose. So that's what Attorney Bozeman is talking about, is you have to keep looking down the line of, a lot of people came to the van to check. Why didn't somebody say, hey, this isn't right? Mm -hmm. So, have y'all had a we conversation with Paul Howard yet about charges? We met with uh, Mr. Howard and his investigators this morning. Uh, they are reviewing and making a determination as to whether there should, whether there are going to be any charges brought. We are confident. We believe that charges should be brought against the two officers that were fired, for starters, but then for other officers as well. And so. Um, we don't think there would be any justice without these officers being criminally prosecuted. And, and I do want to take a moment uh, because I know where, where this goes. We see this all the time. The character assassination. So let's just clear it up real quick. Messiah Young has never been arrested a day in his life. 
So let's not, let's not do that. Messiah Young had no drugs on his person at all. Let's not do that. The firearm that they yelled out, there's a gun, there was no gun. So we just want to be clear, all of the tricks that Chris and I see played out when our clients are abused and even killed, don't try to use those tricks on these young people. You got the wrong ones this time. These kids are clean. So there is no justification, none whatsoever for what they did to them and for what this system did to them. So we wanted to put that out because there was, and it's, and it's really saddening that certain so-called African-American leaders picked up on the, there was a gun and they let that go out without having any fact checking. If there was a gun, best believe this would have had a very different outcome. That was an excuse a rationale for their treatment that does not stand. Litigation forthcoming? <laughs> <laughs> there, there's That's the, why we're here. There, there's the answer for that. Because look, here's the thing, and, and another excuse that people use is, um, oh, they get lawyers just so they can sue the city. Yes, because a lot of companies and a lot of cities only talk in money. So if you want to talk that talk, then we're going to be having a serious discussion. Because what happens, and I've seen it in cases I've had in other cities, is once they have to actually start writing checks, a chief gets fired. This person has changes office. A whole new city council comes because now they can get their platform reform. We're never going to have to do that. So if some people who are selfish and only talk in green, then fine, we're going to hurt you there. But we want change in policies and procedures and laws. It's not hard to fix. Everybody's looking around. Why are people tearing this up? Why are people running around? Because such a simple answer from decision makers can end it all right now. They could have policing fixed in a week if they wanted. But they don't. Sorry. Do you guys have a clear idea of why they stopped their car, Mr. Young's car, versus all the other cars that were in line? So one of the things that is alarming is this pattern of law enforcement when people began to film their conduct. Uh, what people may not have seen was that another Morehouse student who again was not involved in any melee, hadn't thrown a brick, a bottle, anything, is talking, just communicating with them, his classmates. And then out of nowhere, law enforcement comes and tackles him to the ground. And so they began to film and try to capture, oh my God, what are they doing? And so as soon as they try to capture that misconduct, they become the victims of the very same kind of misconduct. So we believe that the motivation was again to silence, to not capture what we know was happening in the street on Saturday night, on Friday, on Sunday, as it relates to law enforcement and their dealing with these young people. Mr. Mr. Young had began to try to capture what was happening and he was targeted. And so uh, we're concerned. Uh, again, we've had a number of lawsuits involving innocent bystanders filming and then they will become the target of law enforcement excessive force. And that has happened repeatedly in this city and that's something that has to be addressed. It's fleeing. He was being told to go and then stop and then go and then stop. And if you all watch the video, it's, again, it's confusing. The only thing that's consistent is the level of aggression from the police. Their commands are inconsistent. Their behavior is inconsistent. The only thing that's consistent is their level of aggression and their determination to hurt or harm or injure, which they have done. Um, he has a fractured arm. He has over... 26. He has 20 stitches in his arm with a fracture. And he was heading home. That, that, that's, that's one thing we do want to make clear. And I'm sorry, I get to you, Chris. Is I saw the comments already, like you said, oh, well, that's what happens when you ride and look. They weren't at the protests. That people do understand this, right? They weren't protesting. They weren't out there. They were driving around, trying to get something to eat, and were leaving and got caught in the traffic. 
So the comments about where well, they shouldn't have been out there, they were in their car and got caught in traffic. So, go ahead, Christian. Have y'all had anybody else come with y'all or talk to anyone who was a victim of these, who had, was, had a similar story about these officers? I'm going to talk to someone today that got their clavicle broken uh, out at, right outside of Lenox Mall. A young lady lifted up and body slammed um, on video and her clavicle is broken. So um, this, this, th we have to be clear. The curfew should not have been a license to beat, batter, and maim. Should not have been a license to do that. I know everybody wants to protect the property and I know that's so critically important, but this wasn't a license to do what they did to these young people. At, at the time, were they aware that there was a curfew? They had become aware. They, again, they were driving to get something to eat. And so by this time it's 9.15 yeah. um, and they're in traffic. So the idea that you can Go, you can't go get something to eat in your car. They're not out protesting. They're not out running around with us. They're just trying to go home. Um, it could have happened at, well, not any of you all. Uh, it could have happened at any yeah. young um, black or brown person. Yeah. And uh, another thing, I got that notice at like 8.50. They said and I've been driving somewhere. I got it at 8.50. Tanaya has an out-of-state cell phone number. She never even saw this notice. So the kids were already out. I mean, if a curfew suddenly pops up, and this was the first day it was instituted. So if you're caught out already at 859, what are you supposed to do, disappear? <laughs> if you're out at 901, do you now get beaten? I mean, all they have to do and in all these situations, talk. The first reaction doesn't have to be throw a punch or try and break a window. Just talk and say, go home. That, how is that irrational? There was a report that the, they uh, disabled the vehicle as well by not just breaking the glass, but slashing the tires. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Yes. You can see it on the video. They slash the tires. The they break out all the, you know, they break out all the windows. I mean, if you just watch the video, how do you describe that behavior other than barbaric? That's barbaric behavior. Based on what? Two, I mean, unarmed college students in a car in traffic. I mean, the rationale, and it's, it's important for us to really grasp that that's, that would, that's only permissible when you look like us. I mean, it just, it's just not, it just doesn't happen consistently to anyone else. It doesn't. One more, One more question. One what are the ages? Masai just turned 22. 22. Um, I'm 20, I turned 20 in January. Dating? Yeah. <laughs> and he felt he felt the need once he saw what was happening and he was feeling the pain he of being tased, he felt the need to try to protect her. I mean it's a this is a you know, all the right this is this is what we want. I have a twenty and twenty two year old. This is the kind of son we want. And then you do that to him? He's trying to protect this sister? That's I mean we yeah. we really need to dig Dig deep, you know, tell the full story on this yeah. one, you and, all. And you have to understand what, what, if it's one of those, what more, what higher standard do you want? This is the niece of a prosecutor, a former prosecutor here. I mean, what, what more do you, do you want? Just to get to know them a little bit more, where were you guys going to school for? Or what are you in school for? And where are you guys from? Um, my major is psychology with a concentration in mental health. And, um, I'm from San Antonio, Texas. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to give you guys uh, my Morehouse introduction. Uh, my name is Messiah Young. I'm a 22-year-old senior from Chicago, Illinois, currently studying business management. Thank you. <laughs> as we wrap this up, as Attorney Bozeman said, uh, to the I'm, I'm sorry, as Attorney Davis said. <laughs> uh, uh, don't use this, the knuckleheads out there. <coughs> Don't try and use these kids' names as an excuse uh, to distract the topic from the tragedy that happened. Uh, it's a game, and, and we've caught on to that extremely quickly, the distraction of tearing stuff up, 
or using uh, our clients names in vain in all the cases we have to distract from change and what's going on so that the only thing y'all air instead of this press conference is a one car on fire. So to all the uh, people out there that are trying to distract, um, it's not going to work. Tanaya, what year are you? Hi, I'm a senior. Yeah. And we, we do want to just lift up the, the family and the name of George Floyd, uh, clients of, of, of the Stewart um, Law Firm. We just want to lift that name up so that we can refocus about what all of this is about. Thank you all very much.